Longer Coaches Show on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Long gone. Ball is crushed. A grand slam and the Cougs have 19 runs. U.S. Bank. Life keeps moving. We're here for every step. U.S. Bank. Member FDIC. Tonight's show is also brought to you by Zeppos, the home for the Cougar Coaches Show, where the Palouse comes to play and eat. And by Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Proud partner of Washington State Athletics. Swing and a miss, strike three. High heat inside. Now let's talk Cougar baseball with Cougar head coach. Coach Brian Green, here's the voice of the Cougs, Matt Chazanow. Yes. Yes. Go. Brian Green, nobody, nobody brings a crowd like the skipper. <laughs> no, nobody brings got a following the crew. We got the like crew. PG. We got a, we got a we got the crew. Here. Great to see everybody. We're here live at Zeppo's. And uh, uh, <laughs> Skip took two or three on the road. Win at Riverside. Win a convincing win against Portland. I want to go right off the, off the bat here, if you will. I want to talk to Dakota Hawkins because of recency. Mm. Uh, Ten Ks in about five innings of ball. Uh, in Portland, he'd been a little bit banged up. It's great to see him back. I know it's the back end of the year, but I love to see 10Ks from Dakota Hawks. Yeah, Hawks, uh, that, that's one of those guys that for us, uh, is, we didn't talk a lot about it. We don't talk a lot about those things when we're missing players, but uh, when we went, went through that little bit of a soft patch, uh, Hawk wasn't a part of it. And he is back in April, and uh, he has been lights out for us. He's been a, a big reason why we've been able to turn this season around. Yesterday was phenomenal, obviously. Ten strikeouts, five innings, uh, just set the tone, had three pitches going, aggressive. I think he struck out the first six hitters he faced. Mm. If not, it was five of six. But uh, he just commanded that game. And uh, But that's him. You know, he's tough. He's a great competitor, and uh, he's a great kook. So uh, gr- we're really happy for him. He's just he's such a great kook. He just really, really cares, and he's talented. Yeah, he's got a big right arm. Uh, he's worked at it. I, you know, he's kind of evolved as a player. And uh, here he is with 10 Ks through about half the ball game. There, uh, win three nothing at Portland. Uh, really tough one in that final game at UCLA. I thought you had it. I, I did. So do we. That's probably the first game Chaz in a month where when we come storming back, we don't not you know we don't not win. We win that game. Right. You know, and that's just what we've been doing. You know, 14 come from behind wins and. We're down 7-1 with the Bruins. The next thing you know, against probably one of the more elite pitching staffs in the country, it's 7-7 in the eighth, and we're going to win this game. And, um, you know, there's a couple of plays that we just don't quite make, and, uh, and we get beat on a Sunday. That was, that was heartbreaking. But, uh, again, showing that, that our kids are competing and fighting and doing all that good stuff that they're supposed to do, but uh, they're playing hard. I want to give due justice yeah. also fair credit here to the pack and what it is this year. The pack is fully the pack, right? The Oregon State might be the number one overall team in the country. Stanford's really, really good. They're yeah, right on their two. heels, yeah. U- UCLA is third in the pack, but – I thought that looked like the team that preseason was actually number one in the pack and number one maybe in the country and one of those teams they'd beat in Texas. They had been banged up. They looked really good. Yeah, they're two, they're, they're two arms short. So, you know, when we were in the dugout going, wow, I couldn't even imagine if, if their Saturday, Sunday guys are, are with them, what this team would look like. But they're a little young positionally, uh, and they're advanced and elite on the mound. Um, Ratchix is one of the best arms in, the, in, in America. Yep. Uh, you know, it's up to 95 and three pitches both sides. Um, but, yeah, no, it's elite pitching, and it's elite fastball command. So, you know, kudos to Coach Savage. Uh, I had a chance to be on his staff for four years. Uh, he's a special man in my life, and uh, but yeah, they're good, and uh, I couldn't even imagine where they were with with the other two arms that weren't a part of their deal right now. It's got to be weird being back there and coaching. It's cool, uh, you know. I just we have so many great memories of driving from Long Beach and staying in hotels and in Marina Del Rey uh, to also, avoid traffic in it's also LA. Also, a little scar tissue driving up and down from well, Long yeah, Beach. Well, yeah, that's pretty yeah. far. Uh, that's but uh, not yeah, always thirty-two fun. miles is three hours. But right. uh, you know, to see what what's transpired with the program when we were there from. 05 to 9 uh, to, you know, all the facility upgrades. It, pretty cool. And uh, I was happy to be a part of it to see Crawford, Cole Bauer, and, you know, those names on the wall that, uh, that we were a part of. That's cool. They've kind of done with their ballpark what we've done with yeah. ours, with the facility and yeah. what the Beavers have done. They're kind of stair-stepping improvements. Yeah. They've done a bunch of stuff. It's good to see that for the league. Good to see that for the pack. Obviously, we're, we're right in the conversation there with everything that's been going on there on that uh, down that left field line, you know, yeah. the ballpark. I think, Chaz, that, that's, I'm glad you brought that up because it, that's kind of the model for us. Yeah. Um, if you look at Jackie Robinson, very similar stadiums. You know, you come in elevated. You've got a bowl. Uh, it's not exceptionally big in terms of fan attendance. All you need is 3,000 on the West Coast. Yeah. You get a hitting facility. You get your indoor. You start to dress it up with a beer garden and a pavilion, and the next thing you know, you've got a really classic place. That's kind of the model for us that we want to go with in terms of adding some brick 
uh, maybe we get a, an overhead deck and a, a beer pavilion and we all of a sudden we have some private boxes and those are down the road. But, you know, a, a streamlined chair back, add brick, because we have such a great place. Yeah. And it's so this pristine and, and, and pretty. Can we add more brick? Can we make it more collegiate? Can we make it more classic? Yeah. And, and, and the more that we win, the more that we can be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Someone, yeah. someone actually, one of their, the TV folks who's working was trying to poke my brain about, Pullman, they asked exactly that. Like, how, what's your ballpark like versus this one? It's very similar. I said, well, it's almost identical, actually. Yeah. I mean, it really is. And they did a good job. They had a good crowd there. It was a, it was a, yeah. it was a good, good little setup. Yeah, Bruce Willis there. I mean, how about that? You know? That yeah. was – I almost ran into him. I mean, well, I, I, and I, I walk up, and it's Bruce Willis. And, you know, it's, it's Bruce Willis. Like, it's he's Bruce all tough. And I almost crucked him, and I felt horrible. You know, because I, I'd, be, I'd have been the guy who ran over Bruce, Bruce Willis. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. Well, and then we had the Penguin. We'll talk about the Penguin. Oh, we have to. We'll and do that. Yeah. Karos, and, yeah, that was a yeah. good crowd on Saturday, Sunday. We had some big leaguers there. Yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was really, really fun. And, yeah. Um, you know, it, it wasn't the result that you wanted, but – there were two real big bright spots. First of all, I thought you had the third game of yeah. the series, and is what it is. We talked about that a little bit, but Cole McMillan's pitching performance was dynamite. I mean, he he was he he had a bad first inning, not a horrible first inning, but it wasn't what he did the rest of the ball game, which was lock UCLA up, shut him down. Yeah, and Coley is just. I mean, that's five or six starts where I, I think in two of the six uh, he's had a rough first inning. Yeah. Uh, and the other four, he hasn't had a rough inning at all. I mean, he's been phenomenal for us. You know, he's pitching at a at a low two his last five starts. I mean, he's just been flat-out dominant. He's acted like a Friday night guy. Um, he's developed a changeup. Kudos to him and Coach Claggs. He's learned how to pitch instead of just throw. He was more of a thrower when the season started. He's now a four-pitch mix lefty with a changeup, and he's getting right-handers out. And um, one of our leaders, great personality guy, and uh, – that's kind of him, you know. If he gives up four, okay, I, I need to dig in a little bit deeper here because I got to get our team in the sixth, seventh inning, or we're going to get rolled here in this weekend. We're going to lose pitching. So he stepped up when he had a bad first inning. He has gone five or more since mid March. Yeah, I know. It's been really good. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I know that- he really has. And the changeup, the development of that, the development of lower pitch counts because he's getting into fastball command better. He's dumping the breaking ball in. He's throwing the harder breaking ball against left-handers. He's just doing what you're kind of supposed to do as a Friday guy, and he's really emerged. I think his maturity um, and his competitiveness have been really two things about have changed his practice routines, hmm. which you've seen, the, you've seen greater gains on the diamond. Yeah, he's, he's been a, an elite uh, weekend-type yeah. guy. He's thrown 100-plus pitches now, one, two, three, four, five times. Uh, he threw 113 career high against UCLA after giving up four runs in the first. Locked everybody down. I think he retired 14 of 16 or 14 of 17 after that first inning. Yeah, it was it was really good, yeah. you know, and, and UCLA's tough. Their first four hitters are really good. You know, you've got a, a freshman All-American leading off. Yeah. Uh, you've got Karos, the son, on the four and the five. Uh, they're talented, and, uh, and he was able to shut them down. Kudos to him. He did a good job, him and Clags. Karos looks like his dad, uh, kind of plays a little bit like his dad, and uh, he does, uh, does a really good job there at third base for him. Yeah, th- that actually really, really upset us. Uh, we don't really like to talk about that, Chaz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, you got Karos. Uh, he is a phenomenal third baseman. Yeah. He's got length. Um, he is a legitimate, legitimate defender. I'm on the All-American Committee. I know he's probably a year away, probably, uh, but a great talent. He's long. Uh, he's accurate with his arm. He's a baseball guy. He's in the right spot at the right time. You know, and he's, and he's Eric Carroll's son, and he kind of acts like it's a good player. Yeah, really good. His dad was there. Uh, uh, he's, you know, big like his dad. You yeah. know, it looks like a, a big league frame. Yeah. I mean, he's just a really good ball player. He's a good ball player. Hey, was he banged up? He, uh, well, we don't need to get into it. Yeah. He's got limited sample size, and um, he's, had a, he's had a really good year. All the more impressive for Cole McMillan. I, I, yeah. th- I thought he looked great. Taylor struggled the, the next ball game. He just couldn't quite do what Cole did, which was settle down after that rocky first. Credit to UCLA. They were aggressive early on in, in counts. Just couldn't quite get that out pitch going. Yeah, Grant's, you know, um, Grant's got to find uh, – he's got to find a different level when we start the games. And we talked about this, and this is why I'm sharing it. But, you know, he, he's got to find a way when the games start that, uh, that it's on, you know. And um, he's been feeling his way through his starts. You know, let, let, let's feel his way through a couple, of, and then let's get to the second or third inning, and then we'll get going. Uh, you know, we don't have time for that. And yeah. I talked to Grant about that specifically, whether it be his, his pre-start routine uh, or it's let's not worry about leaving anything in the tank. But, you know, uh, there's there's some adjustments he needs to make. He's a little bit early, and he's pushing the ball a little bit, and, I, and he knows that, and he's working on it. I even saw it in the bullpen with him and Clags that it was cool to watch 
Oh my God, uh, we got we got a Dewey sighting. But uh, <laughs> no, but he's he just you know he's getting better, and uh, or he was working on it this week. So that was um, he's got to be able to bring that. A State can really really hit. So um, we're excited about him getting better, you know, uh, this week. But he got to start faster. You know, that's two or three in a row, and he's so talented, and he's got such good stuff. Uh, we're looking for him to respond this week because he's been a really good arm for us. You know, he actually reflected that on the air in our post-game interview. I forget which start it was after maybe uh, Cal. No, it would have been maybe USC. I, I forget which start, but he came on. It was USC. And he said, you know, I've, I've had an issue mentally with first innings. You got to go. He and, said that. And, you know, Chas, as, as baseball people will tell you, you know, even Coach Hill at, at Hawaii when I was with him at the University of San Diego, but he actually had a phrase, and it was called the inevitable two. And, and, and there are it just – it's the first inning, you know, and starters, they settle in. What pitch do I have? Is the, is the curve going to be good for me on the mound? I know it was in the bullpen, but I don't necessarily have it on the game mound. Or where's the change up? Are these guys stuffing the plate? Are they backing off? Is the umpire squeezing you by a ball? And all those things um, that you settle into in terms of – the, the first inning a lot of times is about information, and, and you're just always working to start fast. But, you know, when you start, you got to go. And, and the, so with Grant saying that, uh, that's very common, you know, for most starting pitchers. It's very common for most hitters. You come back and go, well, the umpire called that, and it was a ball off. Okay, well, the next guy now knows that, and you don't know that information. But uh, the thing that we want to remind Grant of, that's normal. Yeah. You know, uh, there are a lot of pitchers who don't have their stuff. Ratchick didn't have his stuff in the first, but by the third he found it. Mm-hmm. You know, there was barrels early on. That's normal. So um, he's just going to have to find the glove, be more aggressive, get after it. And uh, he certainly has the talent, the heart, and the competitiveness to do that. And uh, we're hoping to see him respond against the Devils. That's what I was going to say. The talent's there. Oh, yeah. The velocity's there. He's great. He's, he's got the stuff. Got some the guys stuff. don't have that. Like, some guys go up there, and it's, it's the opposite. It's, they're mentally in tune. They, they top out at, you know, I don't know, 85 or Yeah, whatever. no, he's got all the stuff to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and he's tough and he's competitive, and, uh, and he's put a little too much pressure on himself the last couple starts. So he needs to relax, go after the glove, and uh, be aggressive. All right, let's do this. Take a break. We'll come back. We're live here at Zeppos talking baseball with the skipper, Brian Green, before this final series against Arizona State. Go, Dewey. It's time to bring the big game to your backyard. With battery power made by steel. Our AK Homeowner Series battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real Steel. Find yours. All prices SNW SRP. I'm Ian McGregor of the McGregor Company. We view our role as that of a partner. What we earn here, we invest here, just as we have for more than 130 years. McGregor's gives back to the community. When my oldest son was in grade school, McGregor's even sponsored his AU basketball, supporting FFA, all that stuff. So it's not just that they're in the chemical business, they are in the community business. The McGregor Company, dedicated people who care. I'm Jeff Anderson. Dad started doing business with McGregor Company for 40 years. We've been with them ever since. You're listening to Cougar Baseball on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Baseball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! Go. If the word Cougs just flashed in your head, your Disa Credit Union's kind of people, true fans of the greatest place on earth with the best logo in the history of sports. And with Disa's WSU Athletics debit card, you can keep your school pride in your pocket and help athletes too. Because with every swipe, Disa makes a donation to the Cougar Athletic Fund. Get your card at disa.com slash WSU and go. Well, you know the rest. Get it live here talking baseball with a skipper Brian Green. Skip was uh, Skip was just working. 
uh, work in the room. He was, he was just working the room. Yes. Uh, a, a very supportive Cougar baseball crowd here in attendance at, at Zeppos. There was just an alumni event, I believe, at, at the BTO Complex. And, and they came back over. to Omaha that's Complex. So cool. And here they are. Yeah, here. that's so awesome. I love it. I love yeah, it. we did a tour of the facility and went over the state of the program. And um, we had our players uh, meet and mingle with uh, – with the Palouse chapter of the Alumni Association, and they came over, and we, we had a really cool event. It was about an hour and a half after practice, and uh, but really cool to see you guys come over from there uh, over to Zeppos for the coaches show. Great That's really see cool. You. Thanks, yeah, for thanks for coming. Great to see you. Love it. Uh, how's how's uh, what's the uh, the forecast for the RV situation this week? We've got a, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's not a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. What's on the grill? What's the situation there in the parking lot? Yeah, uh, we've got uh, brisket, Good. Oh, really? and uh, really? I won't talk about what's in the fridge in terms of on ice, but I can tell you that's probably uh, delicious. The, the coaches will be out there. Uh, I know there's 16 RVs signed up for this weekend. Mm. I can't just mm. can't even begin to say how how thankful we are for the support and for the, to kick this thing off this year. You yeah. know, and, and the, the weather's been rough in Pullman. Yeah, uh, our home schedule has been light. Uh, that's on me. We'll get better with that. But uh, when you look at those two things and you see the support of the community and the RV program. I think that would excite the administration and the ticket office and the parking people to go, wow, we can really blow this thing up just like they do in football. So that's our plan uh, is to move it out front. But uh, in the meantime, it's been awesome, Chaz. It's cool. You wake up in the morning, I, I come out and I have my coffee, and there's there's 20 RVs out there, <laughs> you know, and people are grilling breakfast. And uh, and then what happens is, you know, we, we had 100% uh, season ticket sales increase wow. uh, from previous years. So uh, that just goes to that, you know. Oh, thanks. That's cool. But uh, that, that's the support of the community. And, uh, but we're out there, you know. The coaches are out there with the fans because it means a lot to us. And we've had, obviously, great, great uh, attendance uh, throughout the season. So I will be out there. I'll go park it there early in the morning. And uh, we'll have it revved up. We'll get the we'll slides pulled out and we'll be ready to roll. Speaking of attendance, not only here on the Palouse but on the road, go to Southern California. You go, you go places and there are Cougs there and some Cougs who are six-time All-Stars oh, who won yeah. World okay, Series titles. There. And Ron Say – was at the game against the Bruins on that final day, that Sunday, and gave you hours of his time uh, before that first pitch of that baseball game. That was really cool. That was beyond cool. I mean, my first big league game was with my dad and my grandfather, and it was at Dodger Stadium, and it was like 77 or 78. Say homered. I I remember. That's awesome. And um, they were playing the Reds. And uh, I remember we even snuck down into, like, the fifth row. I'm sure we weren't supposed to do that. But, like, in the sixth inning, we snuck down and we got low. But um, so, anyways, growing up, the Penguin, which – so now I'm doing my research, uh, you know, because we want to present to our kids who have never seen Bull Durham or Major League. So you've got to teach them the game of the 80s baseball. Right. And uh, and then you realize that Bobo gave Ron Say the nickname of the Penguin. Isn't that great? It's awesome. And, and Ron actually shared that story uh, with me, but um, I've worked very hard uh, to create a relationship with him. You know, Neen Fuhrer has been a, just an awesome coog. Mm. I mean, he texts almost every day with support. Uh, so has Hatterberg. You know, Olerud. It's, we have some unbelievable alums here, and obviously the support from the community is great, and our alumni base is great. But um, to meet Ron Say, like, you know, a, a pro growing up in Temecula in Southern California, that was really cool. Uh, and, and he didn't just come over and say hi. Uh, we actually, I was telling the alumni group earlier today, but we actually didn't hit on the field, which you saw, uh, because Ron talked to me so long, and I was like, who cares? We'll <laughs> yeah, hit in yeah, the cages. Yeah. Let's, this, is, this is an opportunity for our players. He gave our players almost an hour. I mean, you want to talk about a great Coug? That's cool. And, and it, was just, it was messages about leadership and locker room and grinding and, and all the things that you needed to hear. It was really cool. And when the message was done and the guys kind of broke up, there was like 15 guys that were just huddled around him and just wanted to learn more. And he, and he gave his time. And so we were really, really appreciative. Uh, hope, let's hope to see him at the Legends Tournament in the summer and uh, hope to get him back in the fold. But what a great Coug. I mean, Ron said – one of the really cool things about Cougar baseball history is it's not like there have been just any big leaguers. These are like important, historically important, iconic big leaguers. Yeah. These are like yeah. important guys in the history of the sport. I mean, Ron, Ron says – all time. I mean, it, that, it's just really cool. Yeah, and I remember seeing Neaton Fuhrer in the series in 81 yeah. and then get a chance to yeah. meet him and hang out with him. <laughs> right. You know, or Hatterberg's on Moneyball and Olerud's oh, got the no. sweetest swing ever had. Right. So, uh, yeah, very cool. Oh, it's, it, it's I mean, Aaron Seeley and there's all, there's all these guys. It's, yeah. It's really, really, and, and you know, that they come back, you know, that they're, they're yeah. around and they're, they're involved and that's part of what this is. Yeah, right. and it's very, very cool and, and the kids always appreciate it and we make sure that they do, but we don't really have to work very hard at that. Hey, what, what did he... 
and whatever you can share on the air, the penguin nickname. Where is what is it? Where did Bobo? Where did that come and from? And really, he really just tagged him from his running style. <laughs> just because he looked, just, yeah, because he had short arms. Did that go did short? <laughs> did it go over well? Did it, at the time? Was no, it? he just he just we did. I didn't ask because right. it's still it's a penguin. I'm not going to go dive too much into that. Uh, but right. he said, "Yo, sure, baby, sure. Bobo gave me the nickname. You know, you've seen me right. run. You get it. Right. You get right. it. Everybody gets it, but Bobo <laughs> tagged it. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, wouldn't it be great to go back in time and listen to that? How that went down? Uh, how that was? That's that's awesome. I, I know that. Uh, Kincaid, among others, came here because of I mean, largely, not not exclusively, but largely because of Bobo and all and yeah. all that he was and all yeah. that all that that was. I mean, that's just that's so cool, yeah. so cool that he came back. And there's also something about a guy like Ron Say. There, maybe it's because he's Ron Say, and and so I'm biased. But there's a presence. There's a certain uh, aura. Maybe I don't mean to be hyperbolic, but it's like no, you can kind of just tell. You know, I've never met him before. He walked by. I beat the team there by you know. 50 feet, you know, like I was just walking up before you guys, and I knew it was him, And but he's by himself. But there's something to it, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, you know, when the forearms are that big, <laughs> you're a 17-year big leaguer, six-time All-Star, yeah. World Series MVP. Pretty cool. You know, and, and on the Cubs and the playoff team in 84, and, you know, and with those the great Dodger team. And, I mean, if you grew up any version of a baseball fan and being a Dodger fan, that group that was together for, you know, 10 years is, is phenomenal. So, but, yeah, certainly it's different. You know you're you're talking to a 17 year big leaguer. Yeah, 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 no you, question. You can tell. Uh, not for nothing, and, and we take a shot at Bobby every broadcast. That's important. That's a key element of, of what we do. Bobby, I think it's really important. Relentlessly talks about the Angels on the broadcast. Like every broadcast, he he talks about the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Well, I know. Loves it. He's relentless. And then Chavez Ravini just disregards, which is really well. And we've got the Penguin. We've got Neen Fuhr. Right. And here's Bobby talking about the Angels. It's unbelievable. But, you know, the, yeah, it's the same old stuff. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's consistent though. Is what it, it is consistent. It's consistent. Always a myth, but right. we, we're going to so, continue to grind and get this yeah, thing right. We'll get them right. We'll iron the wrinkles out. We're live here talking baseball with the skipper, Brian Green. Great <laughs> crowd in attendance as the Cougs take on Arizona State tomorrow and Friday and Saturday. We'll take a break. Come back live here talking baseball with Skip. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. This Washington State University sports broadcast is brought to you in part by Pullman Regional Hospital, the official hospital of Washington State Athletics. The combined expertise of our university and our award-winning hospital is being deployed to provide greater access to resources, education, employment opportunities, and innovations to improve health care and health outcomes for all of us. Pullman Regional Hospital and Washington State, partners in excellence. This is Ray Hattenberg, and you're listening to Cougar Baseball on the Washington State Sports Network. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2020 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free and available from wherever you get your favorite apps. Download the Varsity app today to have access to hundreds of national podcasts as well as your favorite team-focused podcasts. The Varsity Podcast Network, now available for free on the Varsity app. Download from the App Store and listen today. I got it live here talking baseball with the skipper, Brian Green, as we get set for Arizona State. This is a 6 p.m. pitch, a 4 p.m. pitch, and a noon pitch. So yes. 6 o'clock tomorrow night, 4 o'clock Friday, and then a noon on Saturday. And that's the final game of the regular that's season. That's it. It's amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, and an opportunity for a winning season for the third in a row. And uh, we've got a tough Arizona State team who can really hit, as they always can. But, uh, you know, it's going to be gray in 50s, and uh, that could be an advantage Good. for us. Yeah, yeah, which, you know, obviously it's very balmy in Pullman right now. It's right. It actually does kind gray. of feel – it does. It's, <laughs> yeah, no, I know it's weirdly no, cold. It's, yeah. Like, even by Pullman standards, it's a little chilly or maybe yeah. a lot chilly. We yeah. haven't cracked 70 yet. Yeah. But it still does – it's still like, all right, it's kind of comfortable. I can, yeah, I can the, deal the, with this. At least you, the, you know he's up there, the sun. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. somewhere up there. It's, yeah. it's been a little bit, uh, little bit windy. You know what we haven't talked about? We have a chance for a batting champion. We have a chance for a batting title. Jack, Jack Smith has a chance to lead the pack in hitting. We're probably way too deep in the show to, uh, to be this late in bringing it up. But he, he's, been, he's been steady. He's been consistent. And he's one of the elite contact hitters here in the pack and in the country. I mean, he might lead the pack in hitting. He's at flirting with 370. I don't know where it sits right now. 360-something, I think, right now. Really good. And for a guy that's not a runner and, no. and not a power guy, yeah, and I've alluded to that before, uh, but – and I say that with so much pride. Well, his dad, so I, I laugh because his father was at the game, and he listens, I guess. Apparently, I found out he listens because I, I made it. It wasn't a joke, but I, it was something mildly sarcastic about him having wheels. For sure. And him wheeling around first, and he wasn't going to like something out the second. And he stops me and goes, hey, you know, I'm, I'm uh, Jack's dad. And, and, you know, Jack's got wheels. You know, he, he was joking. He, <laughs> yeah. You know, it was pretty funny. Yeah. No, it's, it's a great story. You know, I, Jack was uh, – was a guy that was here when we got the job. Right. And, uh, you know, he had hit 140 and didn't have a lot of confidence. The next thing you know, he's, uh, he's playing for us as a sophomore. He's in that opening day lineup. He was actually in the three hole uh, of the first game that ever coached that we won on the road against Bakersfield and, um, you know, hit 300 and then did it again last year. And the next thing you know, he's got an opportunity for a Pac 12 batting title um, this year. Totally self made, um, has changed his body, has changed his swing, has changed his approach. Uh, and has turned himself into a real player. I, I can tell you that. I won't say who it is, but uh, I had a pitching coach uh, in the pack say that he was his favorite player in the Pac-12 because of his energy and how much he cared about just being a good player. That's cool. And um, really proud of him. He's going to be a tough one uh, when he leaves. That's going to be uh, that's going to be tough. You know, he, he is an absolute grinder, and that guy gives Washington State baseball every ounce of his body uh, every day, and he's done it for his entire career. He's going to be a massive success in life when he's done with baseball. He hit 311 last year with some kind of nagging. I mean, he was on one leg yeah, last year. Yeah, he was limping, and he had a yeah. bad back, and we were, we were, we were just weak uh, from a roster standpoint in terms of depth, and, and he played every day, and we, we didn't spell him, and we just couldn't because we were making a regional charge. And, um, but he, he, he was smart enough to know that this the last summer he – he took the summer off. He dedicated it entirely to his body uh, and to his back and getting healthy, and um, and he did. And uh, he's having a phenomenal senior season. Certain coaches or certain players command respect from opposing coaches. It's interesting to hear that Jack's one of those guys. And as much as you guys are competing, especially when the game's going on, after the fact there are certain guys you respect, admire. I'm sure as coaches you go, that's that's a great ball player. You know, it's good for the league, it's good for everybody, it's good for the game, the way whoever that might be plays the game. Yeah, I think as coaches, you know, you always look at just the guys who play hard. Or you either look at guys who really, really play hard or you look at guys who are really good high baseball IQ guys. Those are the ones that stick out. We all see the talented players, you know, he's he's got power, he's got bat speed, he can run, but I think the coaches, the ones that we're always looking across the field going, I wish that guy was in my dugout, is the guy with the big heart or the big hustle or the big baseball IQ. And Jack certainly is one of those guys. Feels like the common attribute from football to basketball to baseball that coaches like the most is toughness. It's, it's probably, I don't know if it's lacking more now than it was in, in the past, but it feels like with the portal and NIL and all these things that are going on, there's a certain amount of narcissism associated with that, especially with Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and all that that is. And to be selfless and to be team and to be tough, which is to say that you're persevering, which obviously Jack has done, yeah. is hard to find. You know, Chaz, I think I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, if you look at just the game hasn't changed, whether it's football, basketball, sports hasn't changed. The attention has changed. Sure. Um, so what's really changed is, is your relationship to your understanding of perception of failure or your response to it. Um, you know, the, the game is just as challenging as it was in college 10 years ago. You're still failing 70% of the time and right. being deemed a success. 
Uh, but, you know, there is a lot more in our particular sport uh, with kids growing up. They don't tend to play as much. So we really need to do a good job, a better job of recruiting players that play, not just showcase and camp and bounce from team to team. Uh, you know, you want to find guys who have a body of work. Hmm. But I think the biggest thing you want to look at in recruiting, no matter what sport you're in, is just what is this guy's response to failure? Because you're going to fail. Uh, you're going you're gonna to miss shots in basketball. You're going to miss an assignment in football. You're not going to be fast enough, strong enough, whatever it is. Uh, and in baseball, you know, we, we deal with a ton of failure. And I think that's the biggest adjustment that we see each in, year in and year out. That becomes a little bit more challenging is uh, the freshman who just loses his mind, uh, you know, because he's 0 for 10. <laughs> right. You know, and you're trying to give him some perspective. I think if you look at this year, uh, Justin Vandebreek, a total pro in terms of he has had a he's had a great year, uh, but statistically he has not. That guy has lined out. He has got one of the higher quality of bat, one of the higher quality contact percentages on our team, hmm. but he never wigged out. And that's why now he's at 290, chance to close in on 300 to end the season. Whereas some of our other players, you know, it was one for 15, even though it was of quality, it was still one for 15. All of a sudden they went in the tank. And that's just, that is something from a coaching perspective that we're constantly getting. So when you look at Jack, when you say that word toughness, he's got it. You know, did I get a good swing off? Did I swing at the right pitch? Did I swing at a good pitch? Was it up in the zone? He gets that. And, uh, and McKeon gets that, and Vandenberg gets that. And the guys that get that, the faster you can get it, the faster you can be a better player. That's what he's done a really good job of, as with McKeon and Vandenberg. Uh, they've done a really good job of that. They've been exceptional at it, actually. You mentioned McKeon. We hadn't talked about him yet. I want to. He hit a home run so hard oh my to center field. I, 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 no hyperbole. The bullet. It could be the hardest hit ball I've seen. It, it, Torkelson hit two that I saw. And he's, a, he's a Detroit Tiger now. He's starting for the Tigers, I think. That was that. I mean, it was on the rise to the batting eye, to dead center. That was out at Bailey Brayton. That was out at any ballpark. Yeah, and it was about that high. It was a uh, line and drive. it was with two strikes. I mean, um, yeah, I, we actually, we, we said in the dugout, that may have been 110 off the bat, yeah. exit velocity. But we did didn't get see the, the metrics. Data? Did not. I'm glad you said that because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that I'm up. Curious. We're going to talk about it tomorrow. I asked but, Bobby uh, to get it. it was could, a bullet. He couldn't do it. Bobby couldn't track it down. We'll, we'll, we'll emphasize that. It was a bullet. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's had a phenomenal second half. He's actually just repeating what he did last year. Yeah. You know, he's a 340 hitter in pack. Yep. He's starting to develop power again. Um, and one of the things that J-Mac does really, really well, which is why professional baseball is probably going to like him at some point, uh, is he just controls the zone really well. He's a high on base guy. He's a power guy, but he controls the zone. You look at his ratio. He's our top guy in terms of getting on base. Uh, so we really dance with him between three and four, uh, whether we want him to walk potentially in the first inning or if we want him to lead off in the, in the, in the four hole to lead off an inning. But the power's coming, too. I hope he can make a late charge this weekend and gets double digits. Yeah, he's got yeah. seven homers right now, and you're hitting 340. Gosh, six weeks ago, he was 260. 260. Yeah. Yeah, him and Vandy and Matthews, those three guys have all gone this way, as, as has Russell, uh, which is why our season's changed. Yeah, it feels like McKeon, McKeon's got a big league frame. I mean, he's a, yeah. he's a big, big, uh, big body, big wide-shouldered guy. You need that 140 something game sample size sometimes for some of those guys, right? I, you know, like you said, one for ten. Well, it, college ball is a smaller sample size. It's 60 game, 50 something game, 60 game. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's, it's a positive for some guys. But it, but a guy like McKean, I, I see what you're saying. Like if you get him into a, the you got to just get him in and let yeah, him roll. Right. Yeah, and you know, and then. Uh, if professional baseball doesn't knock uh, this year and he's back, right. it, whatever there's nothing happens. to talk about. You right. know? I mean, it's, we just got to figure out if he's in the three or the four hole. Right. Right. You know, go do your work. How but, many homers? You know, and another guy who's turned himself into a, a solid defender at first base, you come out and watch practice and watch him move his feet. He's a pro uh, and uh, really proud of J-Mac and what he's about in our program. He's, uh, he's what it's supposed to be about. You mentioned Bryce Matthews. He seems to be a staple there, either two or four now. He's, he's, yeah, he's kind of left and right, whatever that is, or okay. how many lefties are we going to put into the lineup? You know, if, if we're, if we're going to run a heavy right-handed lineup, we'll maybe move him down into the four uh, so we can at least have something in the middle. You know, it's that pitching thing, uh, Chaz, you know, when you set a lineup, uh, you'd really like to have balance and not just in terms of having success, but if you talk to pitching coaches – you know, if you roll out, you got a right-hander, and you roll out eight left-handers into a lineup, you really give that guy an opportunity to create some feel because he's going to throw the same pitch over and over again to the same spot. And those guys can really get into a rhythm. And uh, even if it's left-handed, if you put two or three left-handers in there, you make the pitcher have to throw a curveball, then he has to go back to the change. 
and he's on this side, and then he has to go to this side. So you can really kind of mess with his tempo a little bit. Hmm. Um, just by the way you set the lineup. Just by the way you set the lineup, yeah. So for us, we tend to be a little more right-handed than we'd like to be. Uh, we have some left-handed hitters who haven't quite gotten it going, so we're, we're pretty right-handed right now. So, you know, UCLA was a tough matchup for us. They're very right-handed. Um, we've got some guys off the bench doing well, but we, they haven't been able to really perform in starting roles. Um, this weekend, it's right, left, right with Arizona State. Their left-hander is, is, is one of the better ones in the league. But, um, but yeah, back to your question. With regards to Matthews, you know, if, if he's in the two, then there's probably a left-hander in the six and the eight. If he's in the four, there may only be other one or other lefty in the seven or eight, and, and we're just trying to lengthen that left and right matchup. I like some of the swings, Keith Jones is second is giving. Yeah, for coming you. off the bench, yeah. doing really good. Yeah, really Lefty. competitive. He he had a good at bat or a couple of really good at bats off the bench against UCLA. Yep. So, um, you know, would like to see his defense improve. That's that's one of the things that's kind of kept him off of the field. But because we've got some really good defenders, tough to take Vanny out of the lineup. Tough to take Montez's glove ever out of there in center field, sure. you know, and Matthews is just flat out hitting right now. So then you've got Swartz who hits a home run seemingly statistically every eight at bats. I thought he had another one, by the well, way. Well, I know. So, you know, it's, it's tough to not put him in just in terms of when he bat hits ball, it tends to go over the fence. Um, so those guys have just been really good for us. But, yeah, Keith has done a really good job, and he comes off the bench. He's been giving us quality of bats. So a guy, you want to improve his glove, you want to improve maybe his, his range or whatever it might be defensively in the outfield. I don't want to uh, talk just about Keith. I want to speak more generally than just Keith. Guy goes into an offseason. You say, hey, we love your bat. We love what you bring. You're a lefty. Love everything. But we want you to get better defensive. What do you do? What do, you, what do you, how does he work on that? You go to the gym. You work on something in the gym. Yeah, whoever that is. We, we, that is a very common theme, Chaz, just in terms of when, when we get to these meetings next week, you know, it's going to be player A, player B, player C. Uh, you need 15 pounds over the summer. You're not strong enough, and it's affecting your mechanics. So you, you'll have a postseason Full meeting on. with every yeah, guy and say, this is what you need to do. The kids want them on Sunday. I'm going to take Sunday <laughs> and get prepared for Monday and Tuesday. Uh, but, no, we'll have Monday, Tuesday meetings, and we'll have exit meetings. and. And we'll tell all of the kids where they stand and, and where their expectation is right now for the next for the next year, whether it's positive or negative, and we'll be very honest with them and, and let them do what they want to do. But those meetings are you need to get stronger or you need to lose weight, you need to get faster, um, you've got you've to create a pitch, uh, a changeup needs to develop, and you've got a lot of time to do that. Nothing surprising, but sure. just in terms of this is what we've been working on for eight months that you've either done a really good job of or not. The short game's got to get better. You've got to become a better bunter. And if you show up in the fall and you're not a better bunter, yeah. then it's on you. Yeah. You know, right. um, we, we're giving you the opportunity here to be a good player. So go out and do it. And uh, guys like McKeon, Vandenbreak, Smith, th those are the guys that over the uh, – they, they work. Come back, or Hawkins. Right. You know, and, and we've got a lot of stories. Barrison, I know he's down. But uh, we have a lot of those positive stories that guys go out in the summer and take advantage of the summer yeah. and come back ready to roll, and they're better players. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. All right, let's do this. Take a break. Come back. Talk baseball here with the skipper, Brian Green, live at Zeppo's Arizona State Week coming up. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment. Located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us. With over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cooks! Start enjoying your maintenance-free lifestyle today with Choices. Bishop Place Senior Living has many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We also have housekeeping and dining service. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. We can't wait to see you. This is Cougar Baseball on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. It's a new season. Get ready for more men's and women's college sports excellence. Trophies will be awarded in June to schools who take the top spot in the 2021-22 Learfield Directors' Cup. The premier award recognizes one winning institution in all competitive divisions. Follow your favorite team's progress as seasonal standings are announced at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at directorscup.org. The crowning achievement in college athletics. 
Hey, Kook fans, can't decide what to do with your late night weekends? Why not Cosmic Bowling? Every Friday and Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. is Cosmic Bowling at Zeppos. At a price designed with everyone in mind, we are your destination for music, disco lights, and of course, bowling. Can't join us on the weekends? Zeppos is the place to be for all ages every day of the week. With bowling, food, and drink specials, we offer prices that won't break the budget. You can even reserve your lane in advance with online reservations at Zeppos.com. When looking for fun in Pullman, look no further than Zeppos. Live here at Zeppo's talking baseball with the skipper Brian Green. We've Let's got go. ourselves a packed house. Let's go, Kooks. As the Kooks take on Arizona State tomorrow, we've touched on some of the offense. We've touched on some of the starting pitching. Not all of it. We touched on some of it, but we haven't touched on one of the key elements because our pitching coach Clags is here in the house, and and he's done he's done a fantastic job with the bullpen. Uh, and I want to I want to I, I had the pleasure of talking before the game that final game with Caden Calber just in the hotel great guy and and he can really really throw that that little rock there over that over home plate lately he's been excellent the last few years. yeah and, you know we're sitting up here working and clags is eating and enjoying know, zeppo's know, it's unbelievable you know and know. we're over here grinding well it's all so, about timing it's all yeah, about timing you know, timed so, it just right because yeah. you're looking at the zeppo's menu and i'm like i'm ready yeah you know? bro, yeah but um no what what the pitching staff has done and what Co- coach clags has done um is and and this is They've just absolutely turned a switch on process. Hmm. It's been really fun to watch. Our entire team has. Um, you know, we, you, you get that with baseball teams. You know, you, your guys are in a fog, and, and they're trying too hard, and they're trying to ple- – whatever those things are, when you can find simplicity in the game. Uh, and you talk about Calber, uh, and you talk about Grillo, you talk about Liss. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are three guys who have made a massive jump in terms of just – pitching hmm. and that sounds very easy what, what are you talking about just pitching when you're on the mound aren't you pitching and um just like when you're hitting you know when you step into the box are you just swinging and, and we were doing that a lot and when teams get into bad ruts you just swing hard and hope and when you get onto the mound and you're in a rut you just throw it hard and hope uh, the next thing you know you're hitting guys you're walking guys and you're not throwing to a spot so the pitching coach is over there calling a fastball away because he's trying to set up the fastball in or he's going change up to go in, or he's getting ready to elevate. But when the pitchers aren't executing anything remotely close, mm, there becomes no scheme. Mm. Uh, and, and watching what our pitching staff has done over the course of the last month in terms of process, Calber's velocity is just a tiny bit down, uh, and he's having massive success because uh. he's throwing to the glove. And he's nasty. I mean, he's over here, and he's throwing across the plate. He's got a slider. Six, seven. You know, he's, side yeah, I mean, he's, really he's very uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, and Liss will give you that. And Grillo's got the big breaking ball. But that's been the turn of our season. Our offense is up 40 points. Our pitching staff bullpen is up, I mean, down a run. Uh, it's been really fun to watch because we're actually in the dugout playing baseball. Uh, you know, and when you get into rough spots, you're not playing baseball. You're you're swinging and hoping, you're throwing and hoping. And that, that's then coaching's out of it, and then you're just you're you're praying that your guys' mentality is decent. But Clyde's done a really good job. Calber has led that. He he's been at the front of it. Uh, him and Grillo have been really, really, really good for us, and it's changed our season. As you look at Calber's lines from uh, late April, really on till yeah. now, so a little less than a month. If you look at the end results, save. No decision, no decision. Save, win, save, save, nothing, nothing, save. Yeah. And when I say nothing, he just wasn't in line for whatever was, was coming his way. I mean, that's, that's elite pack stuff. It's, it's really elite pack stuff. And it started with Oregon. I mean, he came in in Oregon and threw, I think, 12 pitches and 11 of them were strikes. And, uh, you know, and that was when we were yep. down 6-0 on a Sunday and, and came back and won uh, in the 10th. And it was just a phenomenal win for the program. You know, and Oregon at the time was ranked 8th or something. But um, And from there, he is just – he's taken off. And uh, – Again, another one of those guys like a McKeon, uh, if Pro Bowl doesn't come knocking, sure. uh, got a chance to go in next year and, and have a, a legitimate role when we start the season with expectations. Pro Bowl has changed since you and I first spoke, since the day you got here. Yeah, they've, a lot. They, they've shrunk the draft. They've shrunk the number of minor league baseball teams. It's now a 20-round draft. Um, how has that affected college baseball? Well, it's changed it a lot. Uh, that's why you get more guys into the portal. Um, you get seniors putting pressure on themselves, but you also get bigger senior classes. Uh, guys that used to be 30, 30 second round drafts, 30th rounders as juniors who really want to go out and pay pro ball, there's no room for them. 
So you have a lot of the super seniors. You have a lot of senior days that are seven to ten players per. Um, so you've got a chance to be older and more physical. It's what we were excited about this year. Obviously, we didn't have a couple of guys didn't have the years that they wanted to have. But, um, you know, how it's changed is – uh, with guys like the Calbers and the McKeons, you know, programs tend to potentially get them back or they sign as free agents and they don't, they don't get an opportunity to do what they had. Everything's shrunk. You know, the, the, the draft has shrunk. Uh, the teams in minor league have shrunk. So the opportunities aren't there. And I, I think it's really important that the players understand that message. Well, you know, I'll just sign as a free agent. Well, it's actually not that easy. Mm. There's just no space for you anymore. So you've got to be an elite player to have an opportunity to get into professional baseball, and you've got to have a real something, a tool, a change-up, a fastball, a speed, a power, a something. Um, so that, that's one of the things that we, we really try to get across to our players. It's the days of I'll, I'll just sign. It's yeah, interesting. Yeah, those days are over. Changes your calculus in the offseason as a coach, too. It absolutely does. Yeah. You have to be smarter. you have to be more – more defined and more precise in terms of the draft guys and players that we were recruited in the past. This guy's going to be a draft. Well, no, he's not. And we have to be really, really razor sharp on that. Um, guys who would sign in the 38th round out of high school, th- those guys don't exist right now. So um, you really have to be precise in your recruiting and, and understanding who's going to come back and who's not and uh, what your roster is going to look like. Rosters are just crazy with the portal as well. You know, that's a hot topic, but um, you got to have potential. You got to stay on top of it. Nothing's perfect. And this will evolve maybe for the worse, maybe for the better, but I've long admired the transparency of the baseball system. I think the timing you, you, is a little bit off for the draft because of you know, things that they don't, that aren't their concern, that are college baseball's concerns. That's controversial at times. Guys were like finding out they're drafted during really important games, and that's difficult on, on many, many levels. Even for the, the pro teams, it's not ideal. But it, it's an under-discussed element of everything that's going on from football to men's basketball. Is Hey, college baseball's kind of had this figured out for, for, in, in a lot of ways that y- these other sports haven't. Out of high school and agents and the whole thing. It's interesting. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a we have a very unique sport with with the draft and how it works. The only thing that that we can do, um, which we're we have no control over, we're the college team, you know. And Major League Baseball, they're going to draft when they want to draft. Right, they do draft. They do. But yeah. it, you know, it would really help our game uh, for college if they would move that draft up. You know, they do it during the All Star break, which is great for the fans, but for the college player and the college programs, uh, you know, when you're talking about the middle of July and school starts right. in the middle of August, right. Um, guys get drafted, oh, and more importantly, Chaz, guys don't get drafted. Right. And the next thing you know, you've got a college roster here, and you've got you don't have enough space, yeah. and you've got too many players. So kids have a month to go figure out where they're going to want to play. That, that that's tough for the college player, and you're, you're seeing that a little bit more right now. Uh, so we're all obviously rooting for a little bit earlier draft, but probably don't think it's going to happen because it was such a great thing. It is at the All Star break. No, it it probably not going to okay, happen right. for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it just we'll just wait and see what Major League Baseball tells us what they want to do. Crossed. That'd be great. That'd yeah, be great for, be great for the kids too. Yeah, it's fun though. The All Star yeah. break it does make it's it a, a very idea. cool thing. Yeah, yeah it right. does. It's a good idea. Right, we'll take a break. We're up against it. We, we'll take a break and then need to do a quick segment live here talking baseball with the skipper Brian Green. Yes. Oh, so I should save all my money. Yep. Make room under that mattress. Okay. No big purchases then. But you should put 20% down on a house as soon as you can. Hold on. You literally just said I... Yeah, I know what I said. There's a lot of questionable money advice out there. For financial knowledge that can help you reach your version of success, come to Giza Credit Union. We can walk you through everything you need to feel confident about your finances. There's a healthier approach to money. Find it at Giza Credit Union. Giza is an equal opportunity lender. That to-do list you have needs one more thing chill it's an easy thing to do just crack open an ice cold coors light and chill take the afternoon off and binge watch anything go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours who's counting anyways or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week whatever you do do it with a coors light mountain cold refreshment made to chill 2020 coors brewing company golden colorado celebrate responsibly This is Derek Jones, and you're listening to Cougar Baseball on the Washington State Sports Network. It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with battery power made by steel. Our AK Homeowner Series battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real Steel. Find yours. 
All prices SNW SRP. This Washington State University sports broadcast is brought to you in part by Pullman Regional Hospital, the official hospital of Washington State Athletics. The combined expertise of our university and our award-winning hospital is being deployed to provide greater access to resources, education, employment opportunities, and innovations to improve health care and health outcomes for all of us. Pullman Regional Hospital and Washington State, partners in excellence. Here at Zeppo's talking baseball with the skipper Brian Green. <laughs> Skip. Go Cooks! Go Cooks! What a crowd! Look at this crowd! What a crowd! What a crowd! But just a qu- quick little peek, quick little peek behind the curtain here for what BG deals with during the show. Tom Needenfewer is live texting Skipper during the show and nonstop. By the way, <laughs> it's great. I yeah, love it. He's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Uh, we haven't talked much about this series. You're trying to get a, a, a winning record here. You're trying to. For the third straight year, get on the on the you know above 500 thing. Arizona State, tell me about the Sun Devils. Tell me what they're good at. Tell me what you need to watch out for here this week against ASU. They've got one of the best arms uh, in the conference, and he'll he'll pitch on game two. He's left-handed, and uh, he is it's really good. And then shockingly, if you're a baseball fan and a Pac-12 baseball fan, and, and knowing the history of Pac-12 baseball, this is going to shock you, Chaz. <laughs> uh, Arizona State is uh, is very left-handed, and they hit a lot of a lot of hitting. Yeah, yeah so right. uh, that's very different. Always. No, that's sarcasm. They always, always have left-handed hitting, and, and they always just hit, and they're hitting again. They're very offensive. Um, so they have a couple famous ones historically. I don't know. They they yeah. do. They they got a few guys that have <laughs> that have showed up in there and done a few things. Yeah. So, anyways, like always, um, you know, if if we're not successful this weekend, it'll be Clag's fault. And if Correct. we win, that's you know, right. I'll have done a really good job. Yeah. You know, right. it's, that's it's that simple. That's so, how it goes. Yeah. yeah no, but uh, no, Arizona State is. Uh, they're they're very talented. You know they've got a new head coach. Yeah. Um, they they've been a little bit up and down from a record perspective, uh, but they've they can hit okay. and, uh, and 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 we're gonna have our hands for. What we're really gonna have to do is not not allow free passes, and we're gonna have to do a really good job of playing defense. And and our defense has been really good over the course of the last month. But uh, we've got our hands full. You know, we're going to have to locate and throw change-ups, and, uh, and our bullpen is probably going to be used a couple times this weekend. Up against it, need to make this a quick segment. Final break here, final segment next, live here at Zeppo's Talking Baseball with Brian Green. We'll be back here next. Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Baseball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! Hey, Coug fans, can't decide what to do with your late-night weekends? Why not Cosmic Bowling? Every Friday and Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. is Cosmic Bowling at Zeppo's. At a price designed with everyone in mind, we are your destination for music, disco lights, and, of course, bowling. Can't join us on the weekends? Zeppo's is the place to be for all ages every day of the week. With bowling, food, and drink specials, we offer prices that won't break the budget. You can even reserve your lane in advance with online reservations at Zeppo's.com. When looking for fun in Pullman, look no further than Zeppo's. Cougar baseball lives here on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Start enjoying your maintenance-free lifestyle today with choices. Bishop Place Senior Living has many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We also have housekeeping and dining service. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. We can't wait to see you. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment. Located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us. With over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cougs!
live at Zeppo's talking baseball with the Skip Ryan Green. Final segment here. Got a couple of minutes. Got a couple of minutes. I want to talk Elijah Hainline. I want to talk about Elijah Hainline at that third base spot. He has been dynamite. He made plus plays again in L.A. And I'm talking plus, plus, like no, pro plays. Elite defender. Yeah. Uh, started at third base as a freshman. You don't do that. He's made five errors. And, uh, and those errors have been, I mean, tough. He is a legit uh, defender. He's as good of a defender you're going to see in the pack. And he's a freshman. Right. To play third base in the, in the pack as a freshman. Uh, very, very, very special. Uh, Cresswell as well, another freshman who's yeah. very talented defensively. So <laughs> those two guys have been really, really good for us as freshmen. They've stepped up. You got yourself uh, a, a little celebratory uh, <laughs> emblem yeah. that you use after uh, big plays. After, now, it started with batting. It started with pitching, rather, I think, with Owen Leonard, and the, the hitters <clears throat> have taken this this on. Now, you, they, the guys are trying to wear the cowboy hat down there. In the I've dugout. tried to wear it. They won't let me wear it because well, it, it, I don't it, do anything. <laughs> but, no, Owen started this. This was a really cool thing. But in Arizona, um, when we were just down, and, and Owen brought this up. And he's like, Skip, we're bringing this in. We need something. Here. We gotta have, we gotta celebrate more when we're because right now, and we've been talking about process, process, process. Let's celebrate the things that are going well. Um, but it's tough to do when you're down, and all of a sudden, Owen brings this cowboy hat. This thing explodes. <laughs> we almost sweep Arizona. Right. We take, we almost sweep Oregon. And now Owen's the guy. If you're in an airport, he's wearing the cowboy hat. Yeah. Everybody wears it. But yeah, if we score a run, you come in, and there's some dance in the dugout. Good. I get out of the way. I don't even want to look at it. Yeah. But you hear it, and uh, and it's turned into a really, really cool thing. When the Kooks score, yeah. we put the hat on, and we dance in the dugout, and yeah. we celebrate. And well, it's fun. It's awkward when Bobby does it at road venues. He loves that hat. Yeah, yeah. and he's got his own, too. Yeah. But uh, he does that on the road as well. It's he strange. does it in the press box. Very, it's a little – I mean, it, I hate to use that word, but it is what it is. But that's been a really cool thing. Proud of the guys of that. That's a good culture thing. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's helped us. So good job, Owen. Hey, uh, 60 seconds left. Thank you, Skip. And and good luck this uh, tomorrow against Arizona State. Hey, thanks for the fans. This is a this great, is a great crowd. Thank great you, to see everybody here, everybody Thank listening you. or watching. Jared Brent Goober is our man behind the camera. Jerry Kylo gets us on the air. Brett Wiseman back in the U.S. Bank Network Studios. Raucous crowd. Yeah. 6 o'clock pitch tomorrow, 545 airtime. Cooks Bring the RVs. Bring them. Love it. Love it. Go Cooks. Go Cooks. Thank you, Skip.